Chapter 14, Money and Banking. Why are the coins pictured below considered money? Besides coins and cash, what other kinds of money exist? This chapter will explain what makes our currency money and how banks work to keep money in circulation. For thousands of years, money has made it possible for businesses to obtain obtain easily what they need from suppliers, and for consumers to obtain goods and services. What, however, is money? In this section, you'll learn, to answer the, you'll learn the answer to this question. Benjamin Franklin and Alexander Hamilton were responsible for the decision that the United States have a monetary system based on decimals where a dollar equals 100 cents. Congress adopted this proposal in 1786. The first official American silver coin, the half dime, was minted. What is money? How does money function? What characteristics should money have? These are some of the things that we will be looking at as we move into this section. The functions of money. Money is something that a seller will accept in exchange for a product or service. In other words, it serves as a medium of exchange. Without money, people would have to barter, a much more complicated process involving a double coincidence of wants. In other words, in order for me to trade with somebody without money, I have to have something that they want that I can exchange. And also, it is used to measure and compare the values of different items and services. In other words, this function is it is used as a unit of accounting. It also helps to keep accurate financial records. And it is used as a store of value. For example, you can sell one thing, such as labor, and save its value, a paycheck, for use at a later time. So once again, what are the three functions of money? It's a medium of exchange, a unit of accounting, and a store of value. Now let's talk about the characteristics of money. Any item that wants to be money, not necessarily that items want to be money, but uh, anything that we might use as money, needs to meet six criteria. Number one, it needs to be durable. In other words, it withstands the wear and tear of being passed around. And it needs to be portable. In other words, it has to be easy to transport. And it needs to be divisible. It must be able to divide it into smaller parts in order to purchase things of differing value. It must have a stable value. And it must be a scarce item so that there's not too much of it. And finally, it must be accepted by the sellers and buyers in a community. So once again, what are those six characteristics of money? Durable, portable, divisible, stable value, scarce, and accepted. Types of money. Commodity money has value aside from its value as money. For example, gold coins would be commodity money because they're made of gold. Gold is very valuable, so it has value apart from it being used as money. Representative money is backed by or exchangeable for a valuable item. For a long time, the United States was on the gold standard, which meant that our money was exchangeable for gold only. Today, most currencies in the world, though, are fiat money. Fiat money has a face value that is determined through government order and is therefore legal tender. Our money today is no longer tied to the gold standard. Our money has value, in essence, because the government says it does. The American banking has included everything from wampum to virtual money banking in cyberspace on the internet. 
In this section, you'll learn about the development of and changes in the United States banking industry. In its early years, the United States had an unusually large number of banks compared to other countries. This was in large part due to the demands of an expanding frontier. People needed capital to purchase land and materials for building, and there was little communication between the East Coast and the frontier. In the course of the American history, how has banking changed? What services do banks offer today? England forbade colonial America from using printed money or minted coins. Bartering of various goods was used in place of money. When the war came, the Continental Congress issued bills of credit, known as Continentals, to pay for the war debts. Too many Continentals were issued and they became worthless. In fact, you may have even heard the old cliché, not worth a Continental, which refers to this fact that the Continentals virtually became worthless. After the war, the United States began to mint its own coins backed by gold and silver. Banking services. These are some of the services provided by modern banks. Checking accounts, automatic deposit and payment, storage of valuables, money transfers, and overdraft checking, which allows a customer to write a check for money that is not in the account and the bank will loan the money to be paid back at a high interest rate. Electronic banking. Computers ushered in a new form of banking, electronic fund transfers, or EFT. Automated teller machines, or ATMs, lack of privacy, and the possibility of tampering are risks of electronic banking transfers. The customer has little float time between writing the check and it's being cashed by the bank. For example, people used to oftentimes write checks knowing that they would have a few days before this process could be done, but now that things have moved to be done electronically, uh, they're not guaranteed as much time. Electronic Funds Transfer Act did help to calm some of these concerns. So once again, what are six services provided by banks and savings institutions? Checking accounts, automatic deposits and payments, storage of valuables, money transfers, electronic funds transfer, and automatic teller machines or ATMs. When you think of money, you may think only of coins and paper bills. In this section, you'll learn that money is more than just cash. 50 to 60 percent of all monetary transactions do not use cash or checks. What do you think of when you think of money? Do your thoughts include credit cards? Money and near monies. Currency Coins and bills or notes, checks and checking accounts which offer checkable deposits, credit cards are not really money, they are representative of future claims to funds. Credit cards actually defer the completion of the transaction to a later date. Debit cards are similar to checks, but the withdrawal is done electronically. Near monies are assets that have values stated in terms of money, but are not themselves money. Near monies can easily be turned into money such as savings accounts or time deposits. So once again, what is the difference between money and near monies? Well, money is something that can be used to purchase items, and of course is accepted by sellers in exchange. Near monies are things that have a value and can easily be converted into monies. <clears throat> now let's look at the money supply. Definition M1 included all currency, all deposits and checking accounts, and traveler's checks. Now this is the narrowest definition. 
definition M2 includes all of M1 plus savings deposits, time deposits, small denomination CDs or certificates of deposit, money market deposit accounts, money market mutual fund balances, and other specialized account balances. So it's a little bit broader definition. It expands what the money supply is. So notice in M1 it says all currency. Well, that's typically what most people think of when they think of money. They think of you know, cold hard cash, either coins or bills. But checks or money in a checking account also counts as money, even though there's not necessarily physical money there in that account. M2 goes further by including other near monies and then you also used to have M3 but since 2006 it's no longer tracked by the US Central Bank. However, there's still estimates produced by various private institutions. Now M3 is once again a broader category that would include everything that is in M2 and large deposits and other large long-term deposits. So here we can look at the growth of the money supply. Now when you look at, at the M1 definition, just looking at, at currency and uh, any money that is in checking accounts or checkable deposits, you can see that it's stayed more or less constant. There hasn't been a whole lot of fluctuation in, in the money supply. But when you look at the M2 definition of money, which is a broader definition, you, you'll see that it has grown much more expediently, particularly um, from about 19... Now you have to go back up here. It really started picking up a very steady increase starting back in about 1995. It was pretty level from 1989 to 19. 95 and then began to pick up and then picked up even more sharply in 2001 to 2002.